Now at 6.30 on WKYT This Morning, we have details on an emergency meeting after clients of an eastern Kentucky attorney are told that their disability payments will suddenly stop. A man accused of being drunk when he hit and killed a cyclist has faced deportation for a DUI charge once before. And the NAACP says Fayette County schools are not doing enough to help certain schools. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's so nice to have you with us on WKYT on your Wednesday. It's May 27th. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Hope you're getting up and at it. It is Wednesday, a couple days before Friday. We've still got a couple days to go. Yeah. Hope you can make it through. <laughs> That's right. We <laughs> will, although we're going to have some uh, rain here and there. Yeah. You know, that kind of, I don't know, makes it a little tough it to does. get going. It does. And let's get the latest from Micah. Yeah, you have cloudy skies out there right now, but no rain chance this morning. Head in toward the afternoon. You got a small chance of rain. Really, what we're going to be looking for is toward the evening and nighttime hours. That is your best opportunity to pick up some rain. So, at this moment, I think we're doing all right. It's a little mild, a little muggy outside, near 70 degrees down I 64. And that takes you over toward the eastern zones. It's not the best feeling morning, but at least it's dry. Bus stop forecast. Here's your look. We only have, what, two more days of doing this? Uh, tomorrow and off toward Friday for most. And then most are out of school there for the summer. To school, about 66, mainly dry, and then heading home for those kiddos right there in the low to mid 80s. Small chances of rain will be there, but remember the best chance actually comes afterwards. I'll show you that, and I'll show you next seven days because it's warm, it's muggy, and also daily chances of rain. I have all that coming up in about 10 minutes. All right, those uh, details in just a bit. Let's get to the news. Well, it is our most clicked on story this morning on WKYT.com. Hundreds in eastern Kentucky could be losing their disability payments because of a federal investigation centered around a Kentucky attorney. The Floyd County Bar Association is planning an emergency meeting for today. They'll be discussing the case against attorney Eric Kahn and the fallout from these letters. WKYT's Mark Barber joining us live now. Uh, Mark, some perspective here. How big a deal is this? Good morning, Bill. This is a huge case. More than 800 letters have been sent out to uh, clients of attorney Eric, um, Eric Kahn saying that their disability benefits have been suspended, according to our partners at the Herald Leader. State Senator and attorney Ray Jones told the Herald Leader that many of Kahn's clients are innocent. While Kahn has not been charged yet, the Social Security Administration is cutting off the benefits for many of his clients as the federal fraud investigation continues. Two years ago, a congressional report accused Kahn and Judge David Doherty of working together to approve 1,800 disability cases. A former employee for the attorney says Kahn would also have doctors with suspicious credentials sign off on reports because they wouldn't question red flags. The congressional report states that Kahn ran the disability scheme from 2006 to 2010. In that time, Kahn made $4.5 million in lawyer fees that were paid for by Social Security. Now, according to the Herald Leader, many of Khan's clients will now have a difficult time finding another attorney to help them figure out if they are indeed eligible for those disability payments. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. All right, Mark, thank you. We'll be following up that, obviously. And a man accused of being drunk when he hit and killed a cyclist faced deportation for a DUI charge once before. Odlin Paz Salvador is charged with murder and DUI. Georgetown police say he crashed into 57-year-old Mark Hinkle on Saturday during the annual Horsey 100 bike ride. Hinkle was a well-known lawyer in Lexington. His co-workers at Landrum and Schaus say he will be missed. He was a fine attorney. And uh, he's, he's a best lawyer, a super lawyer, and a good partner, and, and most of all, a good friend. Visitation for Hinkle is this afternoon at Millward Funeral Home in Lexington. His funeral mass will be tomorrow at Cathedral of Christ the King. Georgetown police say that Paz Salvador admitted drinking beer and smoking marijuana before the crash. He is expected back in court on June 2nd for a preliminary hearing. And by the way, WKYT News has learned that this is Paz Salvador's third DUI offense. A spokesperson for the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE, says they first encountered Paz Salvador in October of 2012 after a DUI conviction in Fayette County. He was released after posting bond. A local attorney says the potential now exists for the federal government to file charges. Paz Salvador's family tells us he is not a citizen, but that he is living here legally. He has lived and worked in Kentucky for the last 15 years and is married to an American. 
Well, we are tracking some developing international news this morning out of the world of sports. Six FIFA soccer officials have been arrested in a police raid in Switzerland. They're linked to bribes totaling more than a million dollars dating all the way back to the 1990s. The story about the most popular sport in the world just beginning to unfold with the details coming out, trickling out, really. Sean Moody at our live desk with the latest developments. Good morning, Rebecca and Bill. There have been rumors of corruption at FIFA for years, but overnight, Swiss authorities arrested six FIFA officials at a luxury hotel in Switzerland. Investigators say this case centers around bribes and kickbacks going all the way back 20 years. The New York Times reported that 14 people were indicted on charges of racketeering, wire fraud, and money laundering after an FBI investigation. The Times says that investigation claims widespread corruption since the 1990s involving World Cup bids and marketing deals. The arrests happened. And just as FIFA was getting ready for their annual meeting, a FIFA spokesperson said that voting in the FIFA presidential election would continue as planned on Friday. They also said they would not re vote on awarding the 2018 and 2022 World Cups to Russia and Qatar. CBS News reports the case centers around bribes and kickbacks of more than $100 million that they say went through U.S. banks. FIFA's president, Sepp Blatter, is not charged in the case, though CNN reports he is being investigated. CNN also reported that Jeff. Webb, a vice president there at FIFA, was one of the people arrested last night. Now, after those arrests were announced, Swiss authorities said they opened an investigation into the 2018 and 2022 World Cup selection process. We expect to find out more information from the U.S. Department of Justice later this morning. At the live desk, Sean Moody, WKYT. Well, the search continues for a missing jet skier who disappeared on the Kentucky River. Witnesses say Mike McCarty fell off the jet ski Sunday between Jessamine and Mercer counties. The driver of the jet ski says McCarty fell off while they were having mechanical issues. Our time this morning is 637 on WKYT, and the local NAACP says low performing schools in Fayette County are not getting the money they need. The president of the Lexington chapter says money set aside for underachieving schools is not going to the right schools. The school board has a tentative budget of $438 million for the next school year. The Herald Leader reports less than a million dollars of that budget will go toward helping low performing schools. The NAACP says says something needs to change. It's supposed to be ready to go to schools that are low performing, that have a high majority of free lunch recipients, and they're not getting it. The Fayette County School Board Chairman says the board has made changes to help out low-income schools. One of those changes includes improving the student-to-teacher ratio. The final budget for the 2015-2016 school year is set to be approved in September. Well, no other candidates have requested a review of Kentucky's primary election results. Yesterday was the last day candidates could ask the Secretary of State to review the voting machines and absentee ballots in all of Kentucky's 120 counties. A competitive Republican primary yielded two such challenges, one for governor on the Republican side, the other for agriculture commissioner. Matt Bevan leads James Comer by just 83 votes in the race for the GOP nomination for governor that was too close to call on election night. Comer has not conceded and has asked for a review. That review is scheduled to begin tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. The Republican Party of Kentucky's website is back up and running after being hacked. Yesterday, the site featured a mask instead of its usual content. Allegedly, a group called Slim uh, L and uh, and encoders team were behind the uh, change there. Party chairman Steve Robertson told CN2 that he is asking web administrators to contact law enforcement. Robertson also says he believes information about party donors is safe because it is kept on a separate server. Time 6.39 on WKYT. Let's get a check of traffic, see how things are moving out on the roads this morning. And here's Officer Don with a check of live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Good morning. Got a little slowdown on the inner loop of New Circle right now, approaching Liberty Road, and that turns out to be a stalled car in the right lane there. So it's causing a little bit of an issue on the inner loop. Hopefully that'll clear in the next five minutes or so. Checked Richmond Road, no problems in that area. And there's a live look at Harrodsburg and New Circle. Now you can see approaching the crossover, uh, traveling from Fort Herod toward the circle, things are a little slow. On our Waze map, we're looking good right now. Overall, no major issues to deal with. Nicholasville Road, even Winchester Road past uh, the interstate. Now back to you. All right, Don, thank you so much, and it's good to have you along on WKYT on your Wednesday morning. We have a lot more news on the way. A pint-sized football player once again changing the game. Details on a new league that is the first of its kind in the nation. That's coming up in about five minutes.
We're looking outside, not really seeing anything as of right now, but this unsettled pattern is not moving anytime soon. We take it all the way through your seven day. I'll show you the best chance of rain and the best chance to actually stay dry in your seven day coming up.